Tonight, the economic rebound continues. The tourism minister is off the top with the latest numbers. Plus, making the grades, education officials releasing the latest test stats. And later, a window into the journey of some differently abled public servants. Welcome to Our News and thanks for joining us. I'm Marlena Leonard. The Ministry of Education releasing the latest testing stats from the recent national examination showing less than 10% of students who sat BGCSEs got at least a C or higher in three core subjects. We have more on the grades coming up in three minutes, but first, global inflation and higher travel costs are not hampering the rebound of the country's number one industry. That's according to the Tourism Minister, who also says over $3 billion worth of investments have been made in the tourism sector. Megan Shepard has the story tonight. Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism, Aviation and Investments Chester Cooper says that tourism numbers are continuing to climb post-pandemic. The month of May is typically classified as a slow period, but Cooper is describing this year's numbers as very strong. Uh, we have exceeded pre-pandemic uh, numbers in May, and the numbers continue to be very strong for June and July and August. Uh, so we're back. We've rebounded. He credits international tourism marketing strategies for the growth. This is good. We see evidence of what's happening in the industry on the street. Uh, the vendors are exceedingly happy. And this trend is not just happening in Nassau, but across the country, including Grand Bahama. DPM Cooper adding that so far, over $3 billion worth of investments have been injected into the economy through various projects. As it relates to global challenges brought on by inflation, Cooper says this is something the government will continue to monitor. Uh, it certainly drives up the cost of uh, construction. It slows down construction and time is money in development business. So yes, it's an area of concern, but most of our developers are sophisticated developers and uh, we see no slowdown in the level of interest in our country, the level of investments, and importantly, we see shovel going in the ground. Reporting for Our News, I'm Megan Shepard. Opposition leader Michael Pintard says Prime Minister Philip Davis is badly misinformed on the country's fiscal affairs. Pintard recently questioning the administration about how it determined half the country's national debt is due to the impact of hurricanes. Pintard issuing a statement late this afternoon after Prime Minister Philip Davis hit back yesterday saying Pintard should do his homework. You can get a full read of that statement now at Our News Bahamas on Facebook. Less than 10% of students who sat the Bahamas General Certificate of Secondary Education examinations got at least a C or higher in three core subjects. The numbers were revealed after the release of the 2022 national examinations. Our Jamila Misik has the breakdown. 4,906 candidates sat the Bahamas General Certificate of Secondary Education examinations in 2022, a decrease compared to the 5,147 candidates last year. Director of Education Marcellus Taylor. More than 80 percent, or 83 and a half percent to be exact, of the grades awarded continue to range from A to E. Of the nearly 5,000 students who sat the BGCSE exams, 633 candidates receive a C or higher in five or more subjects, while 392 or 8% of candidates received at least a C in English, Mathematics and the Science. This year, a total of 952 such candidates obtained the minimum grade of D in at least five subjects. This represents about 20% of the overall candidature and almost a 9% increase when compared with last year. Now, despite the global pandemic as well as the negative impact of Hurricane Dorian, Taylor says students in Grands Bahama and Abaco were among those making improvements in their performance. Mathematics and English language were among the top subscribed BGCSE subjects and females continue to outperform male students. As it relates to the Bahamas Junior Certificate, this year only 22 more candidates sat examinations compared to last year. A total of 1,361 candidates receive a grade of C or higher in five or more subjects. 
The 2022 exams represent the third year that students sat national exams in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the start of the pandemic, many students alternated between face-to-face -face and online learning. Reporting for our news, I'm Jamila Misik. Public school students will learn to swim this semester as education officials announcing additions to the physical education curriculum in the upcoming academic year. The news comes weeks after two boys drowned within days of each other. On August 2nd, 11-year-old Gerardo Atwell Taylor drowned in a pond near the Oaksfield Golf Academy. Days later, 13-year-old Kennesley Samuel Elias of Nassau Village drowned in the Seabreeze Canal. Education Minister Glennis Hannah Martin speaking about the addition of swimming classes. Most of the schools don't have swimming pools, so there are, there are some logistics about how to manage this across the board with schools nationwide. However, we are now developing a program to begin to, in, re, to introduce swimming into the schools. It's a skill and then really all of us should be able to swim in, in the Bahamas. There's no escaping the hot and steamy temperatures we've been seeing since the start of summer. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is in the Weather Center with more on your first look. Good evening, Greg. Yeah, Marlene, another warm evening outside our studios right now. Temperatures in the upper 80s, 88 degrees with a few clouds. Winds are kind of light out of the east at 8 miles per hour. Your feels like temperature, very, very warm, 94 degrees. On our satellite, ridge of high pressure, very weak one at the surface, still dominating our weather, keeping light winds across us, but temperatures managed to get up into the 90s once again. Feels like temperatures into the triple digits, couple of spotty showers across the mostly the northwest Bahamas, Grand Bahama getting in on some of that action but we are watching an upper level disturbance that's gonna be moving in our direction over the next 24 hours. So we're looking for an increase in some showers and some thunderstorm activity by tomorrow. So it should take a little bit of the edge off the heat throughout the remainder of the week. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Still to come on our news, the millions of dollars now being earmarked for more healthcare workers in the family islands and regional support for Haiti as the country prepares to host a meeting of CARICOM leaders. And later, the journey of some differently abled public servants. We'll tell you their story when our news returns. from Stanyard Creek, Andrus are in police custody tonight in connection with an armed robbery that occurred in central Andrus on Wednesday. Police say the arrest came after three masked men, one of whom was carrying a handgun, robbed a business of laptops, cell phones and cash before fleeing on foot. One of the suspects wore a black and gray wetsuit and a gray hat. The other wore black jeans and a red shirt, while the third suspect wore gray pants and a yellow shirt. Police arrested two of the suspects around 6 p.m. on Wednesday. Police are asking for help locating the third suspect. Three million dollars will be pumped into manpower resources in the Family Islands, says Health Minister Dr. Michael Darville. Dr. Darville made the comments while acknowledging the deficiencies in public health care on those islands. Last year I got the approval from Cabinet. Uh, the additional cost for the Family Islands somewhere between upper three million to probably close to four million. These are manpower resources. And to top it off, we have infrastructural upgrades that are necessary. And I spoke earlier about our IDB loan for facilities where we intend to build an additional eight clinics throughout the family islands. We know exactly where they're going to be uh, and we're working diligently. Health care in the family islands has long been an issue with many having to be flown to New Providence for care. The minister was asked about the issue after a traffic accident in Exuma on Monday night. Seven people including an Exuma couple and five American visitors had to be flown to New Providence late that night after they were seriously injured. The health minister says family island health care remains a focus and several contracts will be signed soon. We realize that there are deficiencies uh, in the family islands. This is a unique country. We are archipelagic. Many of other uh, Caribbean countries don't have the same challenges we have. But uh, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is working very diligently uh, to uh, improve the delivery of health care services throughout the family islands. After years of negotiations, the Nurses Union finally signing an agreement with the Public Hospitals Authority. As Italia Hall tells us, nurses will receive a number of benefits, including a retention 
pension bonus. Here's her report. The five-year industrial agreement was inked at the office of the Prime Minister. President was president of the Nurses' Union, Amanda Williams. She's calling the agreement a great one, pointing out that it includes a retention bonus plan. Additionally, the starting salary for nurses will be raised to $30,000. Numerous of benefits are in that industrial agreement. We've even created a pandemic and disaster article in there that gives the nurse a $10 increase onto her salary during a pandemic or a disaster. Chief Labor Consultant Bernard Evans says this is just the beginning, while Trade Union Congress President Obi Ferguson says the agreement is meaningful. The nature and the posture of this administration is to foster a new paradigm, a paradigm shift in terms of how we relate with nurses. We have a couple more agreements coming up in very short order, very short order. And when they question and ask, why did you sign the MOU? I hope by now. <laughs> I hope by now they're beginning to understand why we did it. PHA Chairman Andrew Edwards says the signing is the first of many. Uh, we have four unions. Um, all of them have expired um, agreements at this point. And so we have a lot of work ahead, but it's part of trying to improve the morale and showing the how important and how significant um, that the human element is in healthcare. Managing director of the PHA Open at Roll pointing out that nurses make up 70% of the population in the healthcare system. And that in itself speaks to the value. And so they are the ones who are with the patients 24 7. Reporting for our news, I'm Italia Hall. The Sterling Global Financial Group continuing to make multi-million dollar investments and more are on the way. The announcement being made by the group's executive chairman who made the comments during a groundbreaking ceremony at Hurricane Hole this morning. Megan Shepard reports. Executive Chairman of Sterling Global Financial, David Kasoy, giving an update on the continued development of the $250 million project. We're past phase one. The supermarket and the restaurant which we signed are phase two. And they're actually going on now in for permits, etc. And as you see, we've started construction already on the supermarket. And then I think in the next, <clears throat> by the fall, we're going to come out with the next phase, which is a seven-story condominium. Hurricane Hole at Paradise Landing was developed to be a super yacht marina with luxury condominiums on site. Today, they added another retailer to the project during a groundbreaking ceremony for Sawyer's Fresh Market. As it relates to expanding Sterling's portfolio, Sterling Global has also taken over management and development of Schooner Bay Resort. You know, we're changing the whole plan to make it more friendly mm -hmm. and we're actually committing to a lot of money as we speak right now. And uh, yeah, How much? well, at the end of the day, there'll be, well, right now there's over 100 million invested in the deal. Montage Key, a private island off of Abaco, also in the hands of the development company. According to the company's website, the property will include a 46-slip marina, food and beverage options, tennis courts and more. Kasoy says so far there's been a lot of pre-sales. It's uh, high to the mid-eight figures um, and we are building there now. We've got on site. He adds that this is a $300 million investment. The target completion date for the hotel is November 2024. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. It's now time for tonight's Financial Market Minute, brought to you by RF, your local investment bank. This has been your Financial Market Minute. To explore the best performing mutual funds in the Bahamas, visit our website at www.rfgroup.com. 
When our news comes back from the break, the immigration minister promises to address the backlog of naturalization cases. Plus, coming up in sports for you tonight, Marlena, Mike Strong, the Grand Bahama native, trying to make the coast roster. will tell you about his chances just ahead. We'll also tell you about John Quill Jones and the Connecticut Sun as they advance to the second round of the WNBA playoffs. That's all ahead in sports. And an update on those differently abled residents who are set to get jobs in the public service. We have the details when our news returns. Welcome back to our news. The country preparing to host a CARICOM leaders meeting to address issues in Haiti, according to the Prime Minister. This after another meeting was recently held to discuss the matter. Davis says finding a solution is important, especially for the Bahamas. For, for the Bahamas in particular, it's a, it, is a, it, it is very important for us to find a solution, but the solution has to be a Haitian solution. Um, and um, there was a meeting held uh, on Saturday past in Trinidad. I was unable to attend because of the other pressing matters we're dealing with here. And the deputy has uh, attended in my stead. I've been briefed and the next step is for me to determine when I will host my leaders, the five fellow leaders here. The economic and social challenges in Haiti worsened since President Juvenel Moïse was assassinated in July 2021. Gang violence continues to rock the streets of Haiti. Davis reiterating the situation in Haiti is one of great concern to the Bahamas. We were seeing the desperation of the Haitian people in an attempt to escape the challenges that they're experiencing in Haiti. And we have to be concerned as just for humanity. And from a humanitarian point of view, we have to be concerned of the plight of our of our fellow human beings in Haiti. And for the Bahamas, it is a, it's a security issue as well because of the, when, they, when they are coming to the Bahamas, we have to look after them. Minister of Immigration Keith Bell says the Davis administration is continuing to address the backlog of applications for naturalization. Once the application is made, um, immigration will do its due diligence and that due diligence is very, very lengthy at times. And unfortunately, some person's uh, applications are left behind. And so that is, uh, for, uh, that is added to the backlog. And given the nature and the extent of which they have to do their due diligence, um, this sometimes go on for more than a year, several years as a matter of fact. The minister was unable to say how many applications are a part of the backlog, but he did say he would get back to the public on those figures. Meanwhile, he hopes the digitization and collaboration of ministries will help speed things up. The integration of the different government agencies, um, it has really helping us, and so we anticipate that we will continue to eat away at the backlog, as well as deal with the current applications as well, so that it doesn't add to the backlog. Grand Bahama native Mike Strawn making a strong bid to be an NFL starter with the Colts. Meanwhile, John Quell Jones and the Sun advance to the second round of the WNBA playoffs. Here's Marcellus Hall. All right, thanks, Marlena. Welcome to our sports, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. With the NFL season just around the corner, Grand Bahama native Mike Strawn finds himself with a golden opportunity to be not only on the starting roster, but to be on the starting lineup. As the Indianapolis Colts now looking for a wide receiver, he's been able to get his a chance to be on the field and now looking to be a part of the Colts offense. Let's take a look. Grand Bahama native and NFL wide receiver Mike Strawn making a strong bid now to join the starting rotation for the Indianapolis Colts. In his last preseason game, Strawn, coming off an injury-riddled season last year in his rookie campaign, had a great showing with four receptions, including a touchdown reception in the end zone that certainly showcased his ability. Strawn speaking afterwards, talking about taking advantage of the opportunity and making a strong bid to being on the rotation. And, you know, there's no time to waste. Season is right around the corner. You know, first game is coming up against um, Houston, so, you know, I have to be ready for that. If it's big, if it's emotional, um, you know, I'm glad to be out here and score for my team. 
I've been praying for it for a long time, so honestly, you know, it really don't surprise me. I've been praying and working for it, so I knew I was going to be ready to roll. Meanwhile, John Quell Jones and the Connecticut Sun looking to advance in the WNBA playoffs. Last night, playing a pivotal game three against the Dallas Wings and they would be able to get the job done here as uh, not only did they get the win they do so in grand fashion pulling away after a 34 all tied score at the half they go on to win 73 to 58 john quell playing 24 minutes in this contest 11 points 10 rebounds two steals meanwhile like i said connecticut does advance they get ready for the second round of the playoffs which will begin for them actually to on Sunday when they take on the Chicago Sky. This will be a best of five series here, but good news for John Quill and the Sun as they now advance to the next round. And that is your look at sports for you here on this Thursday night. Don't forget to check out our men's national basketball team. We'll give you details on their performance against Venezuela. That's coming up for you tomorrow. I'm Marcellus Hall. Back to you, Marlena. Don't go away just yet. Meteorologist Greg Thompson is coming up in two minutes with your extended forecast. What are we seeing, Greg? Yes, Marlena, we're still watching those two areas in the tropics. The National Hurricane Center is still concerned about those. Very small chance for our development. We'll tell you all about that in our extended forecast. Thanks, Greg. We'll see you back in a minute. And later, a window into some of the differently abled public servants. The story when our news returns. Welcome back to Our News. We continue to monitor developments in the tropics. Meteorologist Greg Thompson joins us now from the Weather Center with the latest. Hello again, Greg. Yes, Marlena, we are still tracking those two systems in the Atlantic. The National Hurricane's Hurricane Center giving those a low to medium chance for formation. The first one approaching the Leeward Islands, disorganized showers and thunderstorms associated with that system will continue to move towards the west. It's anticipated once it gets into the Central Caribbean, chances are a little more conducive for development, slow development. So we're going to watch that. It should stay to the south of the Bahamas. There's a tropical wave into the central Atlantic. A lot of showers and thunderstorms associated with that, but not really being watched. But the other system that the National Hurricane Center is watching right now, just to the south of the Cabo Verde Islands, National Hurricane Center giving that one also a 20% chance for formation as it pushes towards the west. We will continue to watch these systems. This is how things will be shaping up for the weekend and into early next week. First system moving into the Caribbean. And then the second system should be west of the Cabo Verde Islands by the early part of next week. We will continue to watch that one as it has a long time for formation. Locally around our area, upper level disturbance along with the frontal boundary to the north, pulling moisture across our area. We will see some more showers and thunderstorms beginning tonight and into tomorrow as this upper level, level disturbance move across our area. And that moisture plume will remain with us into the weekend. So we're looking at some showers. You'll see that in our seven day forecast. But once that system moves out, High pressure will remain in charge for our weather for the next couple of days. Light winds expected early part, but by next week, we expect those winds to tighten up a bit. Boating forecast for the northwest and central Bahamas tonight to tomorrow. Your winds will be out of the east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots. Wave rides running 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your high tide will be at 742 tonight. For the southeast Bahamas, your winds slightly stronger. Easterly at 15 knots, wave rides running 3 to 5 feet over open waters. Here's a look now at your national forecast. In your seven day forecast, once that upper level, the systems, upper level system moves into our area, increased chances for showers and thunderstorms throughout the remainder of the weekend and into early part of next week. High pressure will build in behind that and we expect some rather dry and very warm conditions once again. That's a look at our weather. Make it a safe evening, everybody. Orientation ends today for the first group of participants of the 52-week Public Service Professional Engagement Program, also known as PSPEP. This cohort is also the first where the Ministry of Public Service made efforts to open the door to differently abled participants. I spoke to two of the 25 differently abled participants about their experience so far. They always wanted to work for government, and so I appreciate, I appreciate 
the training program. I just looking for the experience to show people that disabled people could do the same thing. We spoke to Stephen Cox back in July when the inclusion of differently abled participants in the PS PEP was originally announced. At the time, he expressed his excitement for the program. Today, he had this to say. I'm proud to be at this program basically representing the disability community for there was a, wasn't a program like this before and this being the first program of its kind we are proud to be the trendsetters that can participate in the work field and be st uh, viewed as equal and stand along everybody else and feel normalized in a society where we're obviously different. But participants don't know where they're going to be placed yet, Cox shares. Well my individual goes is to shine. Wherever, wherever I um, presented, I, t I try to do my best in whatever is put before me. So I look forward to the challenge and whatever position I am in, whether it be a messenger, whether it be in social service, whether it be working with the youth, I plan to do my best. Uh, we're, we're finding out today. So I'm excited to hear about that because them not telling us has been kind of nerve-wracking for the past couple of days. However, we found out moments later the letters won't be coming out today, with some participants possibly not finding out until Sunday. Officer responsible for PS PEP, Sabrina Saunders, says... It's been a very smooth transition for those persons. Being differently disabled does not necessarily mean that you don't have the ability to function in a normal environment. We wish those new public servants all the best on their journey. And with that, we thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Marlena Leonard. On the Record with Jerome Sawyer starts now.